Now the intriguing case of Isaac Quainor is next up for discussion. He had an unusual year and we're going to unpack that and see how does Dan Houston release Isaac Quainor next year. Just just bear with me, okay? So Isaac Quainor is and typically an elite medium-sized defender and showed that in 2023. He averaged two and a half intercept marks a game. And if we look at this year, Nick Lawson averaged 2.5 intercept marks a game. Tom Stewart averaged 2.3 intercept marks per game. So it is the best of the best if Isaac Quainel is able to uphold that standard. He averaged barely one intercept mark this year, which is his worst return for his career. Before 23, it wasn't like 23 was just this anomaly. The year before, he averaged 1.5 intercept marks. The year before that was 1.4. So he definitely has that ingrained into his game and really leans on that as to what keeps him and has him in in the mix for an elite medium-sized defender. In 2024, admittedly, Quainor struggled. He couldn't find himself aerially. He got lost in contests and was unsure of his positioning at times. So, so, of course, some portion of this does come down to the team not playing well. With the ball being moved too easily against us, with the ball moving being swiftly against us, it is hard to defend when you're running back to goal. Collingwood, Collingwood's back six plays best when we set up in the forward half and able to move the ball well. Without Murphy, maybe Q was asked to play more of a one-on-one role not allowing him to be as free as he has been in the past. You only have to look at the game against Geelong when he had to play on Jeremy Cameron for four quarters, the entire game essentially, right? And I'll tell you this for free. If you're playing on Jeremy Cameron, you are not rolling off him to impact other contests. You are sitting on his hip and following him every step of the way. If he leads to the interchange, you're following him. If he leads to the to the fucking back line, you're going with him. That's just... The, the reality of playing on a, a, a gun key forward like Jeremy Cameron who can break the game open as he pleases. The other questions are, did the step up into leadership overwhelm him? Maybe we won't really know unless he speaks up about it, which we don't ask him to. It's not, it's not necessary. That can stay within the four walls as long as it's spoken about within the, within the helm. And then there's that natural premiership hangover for a young player. You're on top of the world. You, you're better than every other team. Of course, there is going to be this arrogance, but the arrogance was tied in with ignorance. And that was for a lot of players at Collingwood. So hopefully next year, it's it, taking that experience and wisdom into the following season next year, I think that will go a long way. It builds character. He's experienced the ups and downs, the highs, the lows, and can now go in with a really leveled head and understand what it takes to be a consistent performer. He will lean on players like Sidebottom and Pendlebury and Jeremy Howe, Darcy Moore, these type of players who are able to back it up year on year. And that is the biggest step that Quaidor needs to take next year. Also, by the way, if you guys are loving the content and want to support the channel furthermore, consider joining the YouTube channel membership for the channel. It's $5 a month. It's what you get in return is early access and you're ultimately supporting this channel and being able to keep posting at this ridiculous volume at the moment. And I'm I'm loving it. So yeah. If you want to support the channel, go ahead. The the link is in description. And if you're struggling to find out how to do that, let me know in the comment section and I can guide you. But back to the video. Now, the title says, how does Houston free Quainor, right? Let's, let's talk about that. So bringing in Houston, in my opinion, allows Q to not be too, too concerned what he needs to do with ball in hand. I feel like at times... Q sometimes tries to do too much with ball in hand when he's admittedly not that player who is asked to do something extravagant with the ball. With Dan Houston coming in, Q can take a mark and the first thing Q can do is look for Dan Houston, give him the handball receive and let Houston do what he does best off the halfback line. That 
will release a whole lot of pressure. And throughout the uh, pre-season, off-season, I was a big advocate for Q trying to develop his ball use by foot. But with Perryman as well, Houston coming in, I think that is n- not required anymore. We've, we've got the right players coming into the club to fulfill that role. We struggled. We struggled with ball movement. We had to bring Josh Dacos to the back line. Nick Dacos and Chris were our main ball movers in 2023. They did not play off the half back line outside of Dacos, Nick Dacos playing against Brisbane in that Easter clash. But beyond that, there was, there was no Crisp or Nick Dacos there. So that really affected our ball movement. So with Houston and Perriman coming in, let's add Perriman into this. We are going to be more successful in our ball transition, defensive half transition. What does that mean for Collingwood's defense? Well, if we are successfully transitioning the ball from defensive half to forward half, it means we're able to set up forward of center as a team, and we play quite high. So to be able to set up more times in, in, in front of our forward half and not having to defend back to goals after a, an unforced turnover, which we saw plenty of them, especially in that four game stretch at the start of the year, it gives players like Quaynor, Darcy Moore, heck, even Charlie Dean to come into the side and be comfortable and be where they, they, they like to be in a position where they're set up and they know that if there is a hack kick coming out of their forward 50, they're well set up and they're going to work together to ensure that that intercept mark is possible. The other idea is if Houston and Perriman can hold up defensively, Houston also averaged uh, 1.5 intercept marks per game this season. Perriman has a defensive side to him. I've shown videos about how he works defensively and how active he is, knowing where his player is, where he needs to be. If those two players can, can do a defensive job, does that give Isaac Quaynor the license to play on the wing next year? He was deployed there a couple times this year and had a decent game against Sydney, and I forget who we played the week before. Maybe it was Brisbane, don't quote me. Brisbane was the week after. I think it was Sydney and Brisbane, and he, he played well, and he actually played a, a game on a wing early in the year. Maybe it was against Essendon, didn't have much impact. For that to happen, I think Quaynor does need to shed a few kilos, and I'm sure that is something they are considering altogether with, with Isaac Quaynor. He is a, a brick shit house. And if he wants to play on the wing, he does need to shed a few kilos. But if he's playing wing now at his weight, imagine how well he could play losing a few kilos. And that goes a long way when it comes to your tank and being able to run out the games on the wing. So we'll see. He, he ended up reverting back to the back line in the final game on a needs basis. We, we moved some magnets, we put Crisp to the wing, we put Quaynor to the back line, and we put Ed Allen in the midfield. So we just made some space to ensure Ed Allen gets some midfield time in that game against Melbourne. That's my food for thought today. I'm optimistic that Quaynor will bounce back and will learn from this, and he's got the right team, the right coaches, the right people around him to guide him. And the experience within itself, winning a premiership and then having a bad year thereafter, you learn from that. And if he doesn't, it's going to be a problem, but I I bet every dollar that he will bounce back and be an integral part for in Collingwood's back line or wing, wherever it may be for the foreseeable future. Do you guys agree? Let me know in the comment section. Go Pies.